Hi there, everybody. Happy Thursday. Um, once again, my name is Karen Howell, and I am so um, excited to be with you this morning. We're going to go over um, the recipe box uh, masterclass. I'm going to kind of go into a little bit more detail um, about what's in that class. And um, if you have any questions, then I can I can answer those. But um, yeah, so let's let's get going. I know you, everyone's busy, so I don't want to um, take up too much time. So let's let's get going. So I'll first start a little bit, um, kind of about me and why I feel like recipes are so important. Um, and like f finding your own recipes, so not just relying on a service to give you those recipes. Um, so I, I've tried several of those services over the years. Um, my husband is a, a very picky eater. My daughter has some food allergies. Um, she's allergic to eggs and to, um, to nuts. And those services have really come a long way with um, kind of uh, – really narrowing down some of those like food allergies and food preferences. But um, I, we still, with kind of the picky eaters, I still had a hard time finding recipes that, um, that would work for like the whole family. And then like through those, those meal services that just emailed you like weekly recipes. And then when I did find ones, um, it was actually, um, some of the recipes were like more difficult than I than I could manage because I don't really like to cook. Um, it doesn't come that naturally to me. So um, I was just like, I I, like, I have to figure this out myself. And I think too, by having your own recipes and finding ones that you really like that really work, um, that's more sustainable in the long term to stick with meal planning rather than relying on someone else to send you new stuff every week. Um, so the first secret um, is, so where I, in the recipe box I say one ingenious secret. So that is to save your meal plan once you create one for the week. So you save it and you use it again. Um, and to some people this might sound like, like, oh yeah, that, like, that makes sense. But when I've, when I was like doing this just on my own and I would tell people that and they're like, oh, I never thought to do that. So, so the idea is that you, you know, you pick however many dinner recipes that you're going to make throughout the week and sides and basically whatever you need for the week, um, even breakfast, lunch, snacks, kind of the whole thing. You create your menu, you have a shopping list and, and you save it. Like don't, you know, just write it down on a piece of paper, um, but like keep, save it somewhere. And so you can just reuse it again. So you're not planning, you're not starting from scratch every week. And what's really nice about that is that if you have enough weeks in place, um, you have like a large rotation that you're not getting bored each week. And actually it was really funny. Just the other day I was talking to my husband and he we were talking about the these menus and he was like, well, yeah, but you, you switch out like the dinners that you make every week. And I was like, no, I don't. And he was like, well, yeah, it's different. And I, and I was like, no, Ryan, it's not like I'm making like, you know, the same four meals. Like I make the same four meals in one week. So it's, you know, if it's like Hawaiian chicken and barbecue chicken and maybe like a pot roast and, um, you know, burgers or something like that. Those four meals, I make them, those are the four meals I make in one week. And then I'll go to a different week and a different week. And then it comes up, like I wanna make burgers again. So then it's the same Hawaiian chicken, say barbecue chicken, pot roast and burgers. So it's, it's everything is, it's in the same week. And he was just like, he was like, I had no idea that you were doing it because it seemed like there was so much variety. Um, and I was like, well, good. That's the whole point um, is that, you know, we have enough recipes that, and really not, not a ton, but enough to not get bored. Um, so that is like, and that just makes it so much simpler because I'm not having to start from scratch every week. 
So that is um, one ingenious secret. And then I um, have my, my uh, list here. So then, then I get into two organized ways to store recipes. And the first one is the plan to eat app. So I had tried various um, shopping apps over the years and they just didn't have enough functionality to allow me to shop the way that I wanted to shop um, and to how I organized my shopping list. And so um, I was just, I was doing everything by hand, which I think is what a lot of people do. Um, and then I happened to come across this, um, this plan to eat app and it, they have a 30 day free trial. You don't even have to input your credit card, which is like fantastic. And so I was like, okay, like, let me try it out. And it was just like the coolest thing. And I, I totally geeked out over it. And I remember one night, um, they have, well, so I'll go back. They have this really cool, um, recipe clipper. And so you just download, um, it's like a button in your, like an extension in your, your, uh, website browser. And then when you're on like a blog that has a recipe, you just click the button and it uploads the recipe to your account. Um, and it's just, it's like the coolest technology cause it pulls it in and it sorts like it, um, pulls in the ingredients and the instructions and if there's nutritional info. Um, so it's just, it's super cool. And then, um, so we, so there's one night where we got the kids down to bed and I have a five-year-old and a two-year-old and we got the kids down to bed and then I came downstairs and I got on the computer and Ryan, my husband comes downstairs and he's like, Oh, what, like, what are you doing? And I was just like, I'm clip, like I'm saving recipes. And it was, it was like really cool. I was just uploading ones that I, that I already had. Um, so anyway, so that's like a really cool app if you're into the digital, um, and using something digital. But then I also have a binder, which, um, for me is, um, I, I just like having hard copy things, um, especially in the kitchen when I'm actually cooking kind of messy. And so I don't really want to like look at stuff on my phone if like my hands are, you know, gunked up. Um, so I like, I also like having things printed out. So I, I have a binder. I actually have it right here. Um, so this is, this is my binder and then I just have the recipes and I have, I have the recipes in those protective plastic sleeves so I can, um, I can just pull it out and, um, I have like a little document holder that I slide it in and it stays upright so it doesn't take up much room on the counter. Um, and then if it does get a little bit gunky, I can just clean it up because it's in the protective sleeve. So that's really great. And then... Um, yeah, so those are the, the two ways to, um, to store recipes that I do. And then moving on to, um, three shortcuts for simple side dishes. So this is one, I think a lot of people struggle with how do I make, um, like how do I make vegetables and make, get my kids to eat vegetables? That was my struggle for a long, long time. And, you know, um, once I kind of like realized I can pretty much do the same thing for most vegetables, it like really simplified, um, how, how I make, um, like how I make dinner. So with roasting vegetables, uh, which is the first shortcut, um, I roast everything at 425. So I've done Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, um, sweet potato fries, parsnip fries, carrots, um, asparagus. And so all I do is I just line a baking sheet with parchment paper and I, um, I add some avocado oil and salt and toss the vegetables in there, um, throw them in the oven and roast, roast it at 425. The only variable there is the, um, is the time. So something like asparagus is going to take a lot less time, maybe like 10, 15 minutes, um, compared to, uh, like broccoli and Brussels sprouts, 25 ish minutes. Um, I like sweet potato fries. Um, those usually take, take a little bit longer, like 30 to 40 minutes, depending on how big you, you cut them. So, um, anyway, it's just, it's, it's just really nice too. Um, 
and my husband knows too if if he if I need him to make anything then he knows exactly how how they go in too um, and then one tip to uh, you you want to leave some room between um, each of the pieces of the vegetables so you can so the air gets to them and really crisps them up um, yeah so and then the second shortcut that I do is we I make salads. So that could be like your typical bed of greens with like some veggies or something um, on top that's just real simple to, to put together. Um, or I like to do um, like a salad. You know, I have some where it's like arugula and Brussels sprouts and then there's like some extras like goat cheese and some other stuff in there. Um, and so I make that ahead of time and I just, I put the dressing on right at the end, um, right before we serve it. So it doesn't get soggy. Um, but that's just really nice because all I, I literally do is I just pull it out. Um, so I make it when I have more time during the day and then, you know, before dinner when it's like real hectic, I just pull it out, um, and serve it. So it's, it's really simple and it, I don't have to worry about that. Um, and then the, um, the third method is that, um, I, we just do a lot of raw vegetables, <laughs> um, like sliced cucumbers, sliced bell peppers, especially days where, you know, maybe you get the main dish done, but you're like, ah, I don't want to, I don't want to get out the stuff to make, you know, roasted veggies or whatever. Um, which isn't a lot, but I, <laughs> I still sometimes find myself going, yeah, I don't, I just don't feel like making that today. So, so we have, um, we have, the, you know, raw veggies and, um, you know, and, and they're real healthy. I mean, there's a whole raw diet. There's a whole diet around eating raw foods. And they're also really nice because if you just want to switch it up and you want to, you know, have a picnic dinner, go to the park, or if you have some activity in the evening that you don't want to like pick up something quick on the, on the way home, you can, you know, bring that stuff with you. And it's just, it's just real simple. And I do a lot of raw veggies for lunches as well. So I always pack um, just finger foods for lunch. And so when I'm out with the kids, um, we don't have to worry about finding food somewhere. Um, it's just a lot. Um, it takes up less time. And then I know, you know, it's fairly healthy food that, that I'm feeding them. So that is three shortcuts for simple side dishes. And then four effortless steps to building a meal. So this one's going to be a little bit longer. Um, you know, and I, I want to kind of give you like a, a little background as to how I kind of got into this idea of like a capsule cooking method. Um, so I've, over the years, I've read tons and tons of blog posts and articles and different things on how to, how to meal plan, trying to figure it out. Um, and one of the things that there were a lot of people who talked about was, um, this idea of like a, a capsule kitchen or a capsule pantry where you buy, um, you buy ingredients that you can mix and match to make complete meals. Um, for me, that doesn't work because I, I just, I don't have that creativity. It, it doesn't come naturally to me to think like, oh, I can put this with this and that'll make some sort of chicken dish or whatever. Um, but what I realized I was doing is that I was so, I designated like cooking methods for each specific dish. So for like our, um, like our main dish, we only cook food in the instant pot or the, we only cook the meat, like the protein in the instant pot or the slow cooker, um, or we bake it in the oven at 425. So if I'm doing veggies at the same time, they can all go in at the same time. Um, or my husband will, will grill occasionally, but that's like, I don't, I don't have recipes for, um, for like pan, you know, like cooking chicken in the pan or frying or any of these other ways that you can cook chicken. Um, and what's, what's good about that is that it, it simplifies, it narrows down the list of recipes that I'm going to pick from if I'm looking for a chicken dish. Um, and then it also means that I can master those recipes and those cooking methods a lot faster than if I was trying to um, master eight different ways to cook chicken. Now I only have, for me, I only have three ways. I have the instant pot, the slow cooker, and the oven, and then my husband does the grill. Um, and then, 
And then when it comes to like the vegetables, like they're roasted at 425, so they can go in with a main dish in the oven. Um, I steam them on the slow the stove. Like I said, we do the sliced veggies or we make a pre-made salad. And so like for any vegetables, any side dish, even like a grain side dish, I don't make that in the instant pot because if if I want to mix and match my like main dishes with my side dishes, I can't do that if I'm making a main dish and a side dish both in the instant pot. Um, and then leftovers, you know, are they're warmed on the stovetop or sometimes we just eat them cold. And I found that the kids don't even <laughs> really care most of the time if the stuff isn't heated up. And I'm like, well, that's one less step that I have to do. Um, so that's the idea of the capsule cooking method is that you can, you designate specific methods for each, um, like each dish, like I'm just talking about dinner here. So for, you know, your main dish, your veggie side dish, your green side dish and your, um, land leftovers, but, and then you can mix and match the, you know, what veggies you're going to eat with a side dish. So like, um, you know, with our barbecue chicken, Maybe we're going to do, you know, maybe one day I make broccoli with it, but then, you know, the next time I make it, we make, um, we make cauliflower with it, but maybe I still have broccoli in the fridge, but I don't feel like it that day. So I can just pull something else out and it, and it goes and I know that I can, can make it, um, together. So that is the, the capsule cooking method. Um, and then and then the second step is to pick recipes that can be mixed and matched. So um, to create complete meals. So you, so, you know, most of the veggies that I pick, they work with, um, with whatever main dish I'm going to have. So, so it's, it's those recipes that, that they work well together. They, they, they can mix and match and, um, you know, I can, you know, if I'm having barbecue chicken, I know I can, that the salad's going to go with it or the sliced veggies or the roasted veggies. Um, and then, so depending on how much time I have that day, um, or just what I feel like doing, then I can pick, you know, the veggies from there. So, and if you want more, more structure there, you can totally, you know, plan out exactly this main dish goes with this veggie and this grain and just make everything all at once. But I found that that was a little too restrictive for me. Um, I, I like having a plan, but this allows me some sort of flexibility. So then number three, so determine how many recipes you need. This is where, um, this is where I was getting like really stressed out because, you know, you get on Pinterest or um, some of these like, these blogs and there's so there's so many choices and I'm like well I I need five different ways to make chicken tacos right um, but but you actually don't so I think for us we um, so right now I have I have four weeks of menus and that's just what I what I rotate through it that that amount works for us and I think um, I think we have. I think I have 16 main dishes, which really isn't a lot, but we don't get bored with that. We there's enough variety in in flavors because um, we have Indian dishes, we have Mexican, um, we have uh, you know various various flavors that it's that it it, it works. So you know, take a minimal minimalist approach to your recipes and just and and don't go overboard because I think that that can get very overwhelming. Um, and then number four, don't forget about leftovers, eating out or picking up takeout. So we, we have leftovers, um, two or three nights a week. I mean, and my daughter doesn't like them, but we're, we're you know, we're going to eat them. And it, because I, like, I feel terrible wasting the food, but, um, but it's just nice because all you have to do is heat it up. You don't have to have to make anything. So like a lot of times I look at recipes and we're just a family of four with younger kids. Um, you know, so most of the recipes do give us some leftovers or it's like, you know, maybe enough for half a meal. So I'll make, 
I'll actually cook two dinners, two nights in a row. And then the third, we'll just have the leftovers from those last two nights. Um, and just kind of, you know, half of us eat one meal and then half eat, half eat the other. Um, and then as far as eating out and picking up takeout, I mean, it, it, do it occasionally. I mean, but plan for that. It's, it's really the, the unplanned meals that you, you want to avoid, like um, where it's it, five o'clock hit. And you're like, oh gosh, I've, like, I have no idea what to make. I have this fridge full of food, this pantry, and I, and I don't like, I don't know what I'm going to make. And that that used to be what I was. So I'd either like, you know, sort of grab my husband and we're like, okay, we're going to Chipotle or whatever. Um, and that that adds up. That adds up in time. Um, it adds up in money. And so you, you know, you kind of want to avoid that. Now it it happens occasionally. Sometimes like plans just don't work out. Something happens at at work or with the kids and you do. You just need to order pizza or pick up takeout or whatever. But um but that's okay when it happens occasionally. It's the every week stuff, once a week, twice a week, those oh shoot, we need to just grab something. That's that's when it really adds up. Um and kind of along those lines too, um, there's, there was a, like, so I calculated, you know, for a family of four to, to eat one unplanned meal out per week, let's say it's $13 per person, um, which is maybe like a moderate meal, um, nothing crazy. So for four people to eat out, that's um, $52 and per, per meal. And so if you do that every week for a year, it's more than $2,700 that you've spent um, on unplanned meals. And that's a lot of money. That's a vacation. So that's just one, one thing to think about there. And then um, five crucial questions. So, um, and this goes into, you know, what um, kind of why I want you to pick your own recipes. Um, and so the first one, what are my family's and my own preferences, allergies, and dietary needs? And it's, it's, it's hard. This is why I've avoided cooking and meal planning for so, so long because I was dealing with picky eaters and allergies. And it, and it was just like I just didn't want to – I just didn't want to deal with it. But I realized that, you know, for us, you know, to kind of um, – Hit some, hit some goals, hit some family goals, whether it's um, eating healthier, whether it's saving money, whether it's saving time to do other things. Um, I, I had to, to do the meal planning. So that's why, um, you know, I, I actually created this, this um, worksheet that we're going to upload into the member area. And it's, it's a, it's a recipe builder. So it's, it's a prompt for kind of getting you to think about like what types of recipes you're going to want to make. So, you know, so you could, so you could pick from the diet and, you know, if you're going to search Google or Pinterest, you know, basically like, let's do like, um, let's see, what could it be? Like whole 30 chicken, Indian food and that could, or Indian recipes. And so those are your prompts for what you're going to put into Google or Pinterest. And then we go into like cooking method and the type of dish you're going to want to make. And then if you have any, have any allergies. And so it, it's, it's just to kind of trigger you um, as to what to look for. And you could even give this to, um, if you have kids or your husband, um, you can, kind of hand this to them and say, Hey, what, what are some things that you might, you might like to make? Um, my husband loves Indian food, uh, but I, I hadn't ever made it. Um, and then I wait, I found a couple like easy instant pot recipes and I think it was for butter chicken where he was like, this is like a lot better even than what I've had in restaurants. Um, and it's, it's super simple um, to make. And he was like, I never thought that I would be having Indian food at home. Um, so it's like, it's, it's kind of cool that, you know, it still works with like my time restraints, my um, cooking abilities. And 
I'm actually feeding him stuff that, that he really likes. So, um, and then what objections will my family have to the recipes I choose? This is like your, um, you know, if you always eat out and now you're like, hey, we're going to eat at home. And you kind of have to just think of like what things, what questions they're going to ask. Why, why are we doing this? Why can't we go out to eat? Why can't we order pizza? Which is my daughter. Every time she's like, mom, what's for dinner? And I'll tell her and then she'll be like, can we have pizza? And I'm like, no, like I have, I have food here. Um, and she's always like, well, she's like, we haven't had pizza in a long time. And she actually said that the other day. And my first thought was, I know, isn't it great? Because I've had, I have this meal planning down. Um, and so I was just, she didn't think it was that great, but I did. Um, so, you know, and then my two and a half year old's picky. My daughter will eat, um, all sorts of vegetables. And then Caleb is just not interested. Um, but I keep putting them in front of him and I kind of talk about like why, um, why he needs to eat them. Um, but he's only two and a half. So I, you know, I, I, I kind of take that with, with a grain of salt. Um, and, and two, like my mom told me we would do this to her all the time. She'd, she'd make something one day and we'd go back for like seconds and thirds. And then the next time she made it, we'd sit there and just be like, I don't like this. <laughs> so, um, you know, just, just don't get discouraged. Like, um, you know, if, if it's like a recipe, like a really bad recipe that you don't even like, then yeah, like scrap that. But, um, but just, just kind of, um, just be prepared for what, what kind of, um, concerns your family might have there. So, and then, um, the third question is that what, yeah, questions, what are my cooking abilities? So this is where I used to get stuck so much because people, I'd, I'd look for recipes and people would be like, it's super simple, you know, prep time is five minutes, cooking time. You know, they always talk about like those um, 30 minute meals. And I don't, they, it took me like 45 minutes at least. And so, um, and I would always get frustrated because I'm like, you know, they said that this was going to take 30 and it's taking me longer. It's not done. It's, a, you know, and so once I was finally like, I was honest with myself and, and said, listen, you're not, you know, yes, I, I've gotten better, but like, I, 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 I say in, in the course, I'm like, I'm not going to make a, a beef Wellington. I don't, and now I'm just like, no, I don't ever want to make some of this stuff because I've learned that the simple recipes can still be very, very delicious. And that's why I do the Instant Pot and the Slow Cooker um, a lot because they're very easy. They're very dependable. So the fourth crucial question, how much time am I willing to spend on prep, on cooking, and on cleanup? Because you can't forget the cleanup part of it. Um, my kids actually love to um, wash the dishes but they're because they're five and two waters everywhere. And I don't think stuff actually gets very clean. Um, but I'm waiting. I am like kind of, um, encouraging that because I'm hoping that once they're actually old enough that they'll still like to clean up. But my husband actually does help a lot with the cleanup too. Um, but this is just something like, like when I'm looking at a recipe and I, I have to make my own assessment as to how long the prep is going to take because it always takes me, you know, if it says five minutes, it's usually going to take me 10, um, sometimes longer, you know, um, do you have time to prep everything, you know, maybe on Sunday or prep as much as you can, you know, maybe you break it up where you prep some on Sunday and then maybe some on Wednesday. Um, so you kind of have to like think about that that kind of stuff, um, what your schedule is. And then cooking, same thing. Like, um, you know, one of the, I don't like to, I don't like a lot of active time with the cooking. So that like standing over a stove and like constantly like having to stir or, um, or all that. That's why I like the instant or the slow cooker. Cause you kind of, you dump it and then I can do a lot of the cleanup. Um, once I get the instant pot or the slow cooker started, um, and it's, it's not a lot of active 
cooking time there. Um, and then, you know, the other thing I, I, I want to mention here, I mentioned it in, in the, the master class, is um, as far as prep goes, if, if making like a, like a, like cooking at home and making a fresh dish, if that comes down to, um, to you, like to actually chopping it yourself or picking up a bag of pre, like pre-sliced vegetables, which yeah, they're like not as fresh as doing it yourself. But, um, but if you're, if you're not going to chop it yourself, then use, use the, the bagged vegetables because that's better than picking up the pizza or, you know, picking up a, a in and out on the way home or something like that. So, um, so yeah, so don't, don't forget about, about those, the pre, pre-cut stuff. I mean, yeah, they're, they're convenient. Um, and, and use, use them if you need to. So then the fifth crucial question, what kitchen appliances, utensils, and pots and pans do I have to make recipes? Do I need to buy anything else? So that's like, do I need a blender? Do I need an immersion blender? Um, do I want to buy an instant pot or a slow cooker? Because, you know, spending a hundred bucks on an instant pot is going to be so worth it because we won't spend, you know, I'll be, I'll be able to cook more at home. We're not going to spend as much time, um, or spend as much money going out to eat. Um, so you kind of, kind of make those, those assessments. Okay. So now six must have tips. Um, I've already kind of talked about this, but the best recipes are the ones you'll actually make and eat. So that comes down again to like, I, I, I would look at these recipes uh, for like the, you know, the best salad ever. I'm like, Ooh, like I, I want a, like a new salad. And I look at it and there's 15, um, like, you know, 15, um, like recipes and 10 of them or 15 ingredients and 10 of them need to be chopped. And I'm like, I don't care how good this is. I'm never going to make it. So it's not the best for me. And that's what I kind of want to get across is you have to be real honest about like what you're actually going to make. And so don't go buy a whole bunch of ingredients that you really know that you're not necessarily going to make that recipe. Um, and then you're throwing away food at the end of the week. So uh, recipes. So number two, then, Second tip, recipes do not have to be complicated to be delicious, as I've talked about that. Um, but we, we do frozen veggies, and, you know, my, my kids eat peas straight from the freezer, which is weird, but I've actually talked to other people, and they say, oh, yeah, my kids, my kids do that too. So, again, I'm not going to take the time to steam them if they're fine with eating them, them frozen. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we, we, I keep some – frozen veggies in the freezer and then we can just pull them out and steam them and I throw olive oil and salt and we're ready to go. So don't, you know, don't think that it has to be really complicated. Um, and then number three, you don't need to have a fully stocked kitchen. So this, this was the, one of the big, big things for me that um, kind of changed my meal planning because I would read so much about how I needed to um, you know, have this stocked kitchen and here are all of the things that you need to have on hand and, and rice and beans. And then, you know, these spices and these oils, and then you can just throw together a meal because you have everything. And I'm like, I can, no, like I need a, I need a recipe. And so I would buy all these ingredients and they'd sit in my pantry. They'd sit in my fridge until they went bad. And then I'd throw them away. And so that's where when you have recipes, you know exactly what you're going to make. Um, you buy just what you need for the week. Like I, um, I don't, I don't buy much in bulk at all um, because I don't do freezer meals. Part of it is I don't have the room, but when I would put a freezer meal in, um, it would never come out. <laughs> So, you know, those, those meals are great if you can pull them out and you use them, but we, I never did. So I realized, okay, this, this doesn't work for me. So, um, so with the fully stocked kitchen, what, what I'm saying is just buy what you need for the week. I, um, I stopped here because it was saying that 
um, it was trying to reconnect and it says due to poor wireless connection, your video has been paused. Um, but apparently I'm, I'm good. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep talking. Hopefully, hopefully this works. Um, but so, and talking about having the fully stocked kitchen, um, according to the National Resources Defense Council, the average American throws away more than 400 pounds of food per person per year. So that means a family of four wastes approximately $1,800 per year. And that, I mean, I don't know how much we were throwing away, but I know that it was probably a lot, like a lot of food. Um, because that idea of like needing the fully stocked pantry. So I just buy a bunch of stuff and then I didn't know what to do with it. Um, but now I like at the end of the week, the pantry is pretty empty. The fridge is really empty because we've eaten everything and that's the way that it's supposed to be. So just buy what you need for the week and, um, and ha uh, you know, for those recipes. And so you know exactly what you're going to do with that food. And then, uh, number four, you don't need to be a good cook. Um, again, easy, simple, instant pot, slow cooker, um, master a few cooking methods, not everything available. Um, and then you will, you will get better at, at what you do. And also if you have a limited number of recipes, you get really good at making those recipes. And so that speeds up the time that it, that it takes to make them. All right. So that was number four on the tips. And then, um, Number five, build your recipe box one meal at a time. So um, I feel like dinner is the, the hard thing. Like most people can eat um, breakfast and lunch and snacks. Kind of eat the same thing every day, maybe switch it up every couple of days. So put those, those things on autopilot kind of. Um, stick with just the same stuff and then look for more dinner recipes and maybe just start with the main dish. Um, and then once you get enough main dish recipes and maybe you move to like some side dish recipes. And so you're not trying to overhaul everything all at once. Like make those little baby steps um, to kind of get your menu, um, get your menu in place. And then that my sixth tip, have a backup plan. Um, you know, the, the other day, uh, last week, two weeks ago, something like that, we, I, we went out um, kind of in the afternoon and we live in Southern California and we decided to go to the beach and I had something planned for dinner, but we, we decided to stay at the beach for longer because we were having a great time. It was great weather. The kids were having fun. And so that was more important to me, like spending time with my family than making the dinner that I had planned. So by the time we got home, it was like, all right, you guys are having quesadillas and cucumbers. <laughs> and, that, and that was dinner for the kids. Um, I think Ryan and I ended up eating some, some leftovers that we had. But um, I did just have that backup plan. You know, have, have something in the freezer that you can just heat up real quickly. Um, you know, something in the freezer that, you know, you're actually going to make. Um, and, and that's okay. Like, that's that's your, your backup plan or go, go out to eat. But just like I said, don't do that like all the time. Okay. So that was six must have tips. And then our seven top places to find recipes. So, um, these are things, you know, I, I know you've heard, you've heard of it all. Um, but I just, I wanted to touch base on it because sometimes we forget Oh yeah, I can find a recipe here. Um, so the first is is Google, and that's really what I do. I mean, most of my search terms are like easy slow cooker chicken or uh, whole thirty, you know, beef instant pot or something like that. Those are those are kind of kind of what I do, and that's where um, that's where this this recipe builder comes in, and you can. Um, that'll help you kind of narrow down what those search terms are for Google or Pinterest. Um, and then try a new recipe from a favorite food blog. So let's say you already have, I, I don't know why I did this for a while. Like I would find one recipe from a food blog and then I'd go try to find another one from a different one, a different blog. And I'm like, wait a minute, but I liked this one. Why don't I try another one from that same blog? And now talking about it, I'm like, that was really silly of me. Um, so yeah, so 
there's, I have one, one blog, um, the real food rds.com. And I make a lot, they have some really super simple, um, great recipes and I make a lot of stuff from there. Um, and then number three, scroll through Instagram and Pinterest. Um, you know, food pictures are, are great. Um, and so you can head to the blog and see, you know, see if that might be a recipe for you. And then ask your friends and family. Um, I, I haven't even asked my own mom for some of the recipes that I loved growing up. I don't, I don't know why. Maybe because I don't think she actually has them written down. I think, um, I think she had just made them so many times she knew, she knew what to put in there. Um, but actually I, I I'm going to do that. I'm going to ask her this week. I'm going to, I'm going to ask her for some of those recipes. I have some, I have her, I have some of her baking recipes, um, for pumpkin bread and some cookies and different things that she makes. But, and then, um, flip through cookbooks. I, I mean, gosh, there's so many cookbooks you can, you know, go to a bookstore, like grab a, grab a cup of coffee, um, and just kind of look and see what's out there. And, and, and you can also, there's a lot of cookbooks, so you can use this, um, this recipe builder too, to kind of narrow down what you're looking for on the shelf. And then, um, you know, and then if you see a cookbook that you like, you can, um, you know, buy it and, and try some recipes from there. And, uh, that's just, you know, it's a really old school way to do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so that one. And then number six, reuse recipes from a meal subscription service. So this is for the, you know, the meal kits that they send to you with all of the ingredients. And then all you have to do is just, um, put the, just cook the meals. Um, you know, if you liked one of those recipes, then reuse it. Like they, it tells you the ingredients and the, um, the direction. So you don't have to get the stuff directly from that meal kit. You can just go to the store and buy those. And then oops, where is it? Sorry guys, I'm just looking for, for my my notes. I got a little bit um a little messed up here. Okay, and oh, yep, number seven, just just the last one. So use a meal planning app that provides recipes. So um, this is where I was saying I, I don't think that they're good to rely on these, like, these services that email you the recipes and shopping list for, like, a whole week. But I think that you can pull out. They do have a couple, you know, recipes each week at least for us that, that we were able to do it just to rely on that for the whole week, um, didn't, didn't work for my family. Um, but, but that's, that's another place that you can find recipes, especially if you've used them in the past, then just, you know, if you have them in your inbox, then just go back and look for some of those older recipes that you liked. So the, um, so that is the content from the recipe box. And I do just want to show you one other thing that we're going to upload to um, the members area of the recipe box is this, um, this Q and a. So this is kind of questions that like, and prompts that we ask through throughout the recipe box, but it's it's to help you kind of narrow down some of those questions. Like what are your cooking abilities? How much time are you willing to spend on prep? So it, it, it gets you to be honest about what you're actually going to do so you're not wasting your time picking recipes that you're not, you're not going to make or you're not going to like. Um, and so that, that's a, kind of a little, a little homework sheet. It's ten, 10 questions. Um, and then, yeah, so, so that's it um, for this live training. We're, um, I just want to let you know we added we did add some links to some of my favorite recipes we added them into the recipe box so they're they're just links that will take you to um the the blog um for the the original um creator of the recipe and then we're going to add this video this facebook video and these worksheets um 
to the recipe box members area. Um, the video will stay up for, for a little, for a couple days um, on Facebook. But um, yeah, so um, if, you, um, if you guys have any questions, um, you have my email. It's karen at mealplanningsecrets.com. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram at howlkaren. And I, uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this training and I can't wait to connect with you guys soon. Thanks. Bye.